Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdo. In this video, we will learn about the different types of HTML layout elements that are present for designing the web, web page. In the previous video, we have seen about the different sections of the web page. What are the sections that web page uh, has? We have seen that is nothing but header, navigation bar, main, sidebar and the footer. So these are the five sections, the important section for a basic layout often to prepare for a web page. Now in this video we will see what are the different elements, HTML elements that are supported for the different sections of the web page. Let's try to see. In the previous video only we have seen the different types of elements that are supported based on their functionality. But here in this video we will try to see the elaborate about these elements and also you will see the practical implementation of this one in the HTML. Now let's see. It is good to understand the overall meaning of all the HTML sectioning elements in detail. This is something you will work on gradually as you start to get more experience with the web development. So it is a very, very good to understand the meaning of all the HTML layout elements or sectioning elements we need to understand in detail. So this helps us to understand or get more experience when working with the website development. First one is the main. So main content. So we already seen about this main content, the main element also. The main element is for content unique to this page. So every web page has a unique content in a website. For example, let's say that in home page, you will be having the unique content. That is nothing but the main content. About us, you will be having the unique content and contact us, you will be having a unique content. So every web page in a website has a unique content. So this unique content is called as a main and that unique content should be wrapped in the main element. Use main only once per page. And another thing you need to understand is you need to use the main element only once. Like H1, how you will be using only a single heading for a web page. And this main element also should be only one per page. And put it directly inside body. So it should be directly, it should be direct children to the body. Ideally, this shouldn't be nested with the other elements. So normally the main the main element should not be nested. So it should be directly with the body. So that is the main concept. So this is the main. So we'll see the practical implementation also how this main element we will be writing. So for now you need to understand that. So for the unique content you will be wrapping the main element and this main element should be only one one element should be only main element should be present per page and it should be directly inside the body not inside any other elements. It should not be nested in any other elements. It should be directly inside the body that's it next one is the section section is similar to article section is also an element and it is similar to article element so these both are one and the same only but it is more for grouping together a single part of the page thus constitute single piece of functionality so if you are having a single piece of functionality and if you want to group it together you will be using either section or article so examples are mini map or a set of article headlines and summaries. So this comes under this one or a theme. It's considered best practice to begin each section with a heading. Okay, each section should start with an heading. Also note that you can break articles up into. So note that you can break articles up into different section or sections into different articles. So vice versa is okay fine. It is considered best practice to begin each section with a heading so that is the common and also note that you can break articles into a different section or sections into a different articles so whichever may be the depending on the context so whichever you want to use it you can use it so you can have a section and different articles and you can have a article into a different sections up into different sections like this you your wish so next one comes the aside aside means nothing but sidebar navigation Aside contains content that is not directly related to the main content but can provide additional information indirectly related to it. So aside, aside does not contain content that is related to the main content it seems. So examples for this one are glossary, entries, author biography, related links like this. In the post articles you will be able to see that uh, side about the author biography, relative, related links or related articles or most visited uh, articles like this you will be able to see. So that is considered as a sidebar navigation. And the another one is a header element. Header element as you already know represents a group of introductory content 
If it is a child of body, it defines the global header of the web page. But if it's a child of an article or section, it defines a specific header for that section. Try not to confuse with this with titles and the headings. So header represents <coughs> what I can say is uh, it is a main heading of the web page. So if you consider if it is a directly child of a body means you can consider it as a global header of the page. But it is considering into a article or a section means so you can consider that it is a, it is for a specific header for that section. So the next one is the nav bar. So nav contains the main navigation functionality for the page, secondary links, etc. So would not go secondary links, etc. Would not go into the navigation. So nav contains the main navigation functionality. So like home, about us, contact us, the main navigation which is present in the web page should comes under the should come under the nav. And the last one is the footer. Footer represents a group of end content for a page. So for any page, if you see. At the bottom, you will be able to have a strip that is called as a footer, and that footer will be defined with the footer element. So, apart from this one, you will be also having a non-semantic wrappers. Sometimes you will come across a situation where you can't find ideal semantic element to group some items together or wrap some content. So now, for each functionality or for each type of requirement, we have seen elements for that one. For header, we have seen header element. For the main content, we have seen main. For footer, we have seen. For navigation, for everything, we have seen. But you will in such scenarios, you will get a situation that you cannot find an ideal, meaningful element, HTML element to group the items. So sometimes you might want to just group a set of elements together to affect them all as a single single entity with some CSS or the JavaScript. So sometimes you want to affect the set of elements. You want to group the set of elements. And you want to do some CSS, uh, and you want to apply some CSS property or JavaScript, and all those things. You want to group a set of elements. So in that scenario, you need you will be you will you will be using the non-semantic wrappers. So what are those non-semantic wrappers? For cases like this, HTML provides the div and span. So these two elements are non-semantic wrappers. So it doesn't have the meaning for this one. So div and the span elements. You should use these preferably with a suitable class attribute. To provide some kind of label for them, so that they can easily targeted. So div and span should be used preferably with a suitable class attribute. It's not compulsory, but it is preferable that you should use the div and span with a appropriate class name, so that we can easily it it acts as the class acts as a label, so that it can be easily identified or targeted. So what is uh, why are these div and span uh, non -se non semantic wrappers? Why two are there? So span is an inline non semantic element. So span is an inline. We know that HTML elements are of two types. One is block level element and the inline level element. Span is an inline level non semantic element, which you should use only if you can't think of a better semantic text element to wrap your content. So that means so whenever you want a content or text content to wrap in an element and you cannot uh, unable to find a uh, better semantic uh, text element to wrap your content means so if you want inline means you can use this span span acts as an inline non semantic element now whereas div comes as a block level non semantic element so which you should only use that so for any block level text content you never uh, you are unable to find a better semantic block level element for that one means then you can use this one div for a block level content so these are all about the different types of elements that are useful for layout for document and website layout structure now in this video now now we will try to see the practical implementation how we can design the layout so here i am opening this one and in this one let's try to create a file that is nothing but layout.html okay i will try to show you the different scenarios now in this layout.html what i will try to do is so this is the normal snippet code so html snippet code i am using the first section what we will be to have is the header so okay fine let's try to add a header okay and here in this one you will contain that this is the heading so here you will be having the content like uh, website name or business name okay logo you will have the logo and some other stuff so which should which which will be common to all the pages so this is an header header section or something like this okay and the another one comes the next one is the nav so
also navbar so here this navbar is also very important this acts as a uh, document so uh, links between the all the document all the web pages that are present in the website so you will be having ul so let's take that i am taking the four and greater than a so these are the links you am trying to add so let's say that i am having home okay about us and here you will be having contact and the last one you will be having let's say that feedback or anything okay so these are the navigation bar elements now we have finished the header section and also here navigation section okay nav bar section or navigation section so this is also completed now comes the another important thing that is main so which is unique so in this main so you can have the articles which consists of section or a section consists of an article let's say that i want to post something so here i will be having a section okay so this section has an article okay in this article i will be having a heading so this is the post title let's say and here you will be having a description which is of p tag so i will be using lorem ipsum so this is an article so this is section and here you will be having articles like this you can be able to have different articles three articles i am posting so like this you will be you need to have so this is one article this is second article and this is the third article and this is one section so if you have if you want to have another section means you can have another section so displays uh, map or something like this okay so this is another section so like this you can have or otherwise you can maintain this article and inside this article you can have this one as a section that depends on your context so which one ever you want you can do it so here the main content is also completed so this is the main content so here this main content it should the main element should be only single for each website okay main section and the last one comes the footer part or otherwise what i can say is in the main only you will be having a sidebar navigation so you can use the aside in this aside what i can do here i will be having something like related links i can use the related links and in this one also same concept what i can do is ul i will add li sorry so li into 3 greater than a so these are the related links so related link to one so i can add it like this and let's try to copy and paste it here okay so these are all comes under the aside so this is an aside so these are all comes under the main section now the last one is the footer section so footer so this is how we will be laying uh, making the layout so this is a footer sorry so this is the footer and here this is the footer content uh, what you will try to do at the rate copyright you will try to write right all rights reserved or something like this okay so this is the footer content now if you try to see so this is the website layout structure this is how you will be structuring the website layout first one is the header which contains of the title logo and everything and this is a navigation bar which consists of the navigation section and here is the main section which contains the section of post articles and all those things whichever you want to display you can display it and the here is the side navigation bar so which consists inside the main section only so this got total comprises of the main section and the last one is the footer so which has the footer uh, footer strip bottom so this is the total layout of the document website layout structure hope you understood about these different types of uh, website structure section and also the appropriate uh, what i can say the elements we are using for it so now other than this if you don't find any text element to show the proper element means you can wrap it with a non semantic wrappers but if it is a block level element means you can use the div or otherwise if it is an inline level element means you can use the span element and also preferably you should give it with the class attribute that's it so hope you understood about this website layout structure if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you